Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay Junk, and today, well, one of my viewers left a comment on um, that video where I was stripping down all them computers and stuff, and he was saying that he was having trouble uh, removing components from multi-layer boards, and how do I go about it, how do I tackle, you know, taking components off and salvaging components from a multi-layer board. Um, so what I thought I would do, just do a quick video and I'll just show you some of the techniques that I use um, for doing that. So I've got everything fired up, ready to go. Um, this is basically the equipment you can see at the back here that I use mostly when I'm you know, stripping something down or um, doing a repair on something. Um, I tend to use a electric desoldering station. Um, you can, for a lot of stuff, get, and I did for many, many, many years, get away with a manual desoldering pump like this. Um, they do the same job. Um, this just does it a lot faster and a lot more efficiently, a lot easier um, than one of these. But I'll show that it is possible to get stuff off a multi-layer board even with. Um, desolder pump like this it's just you know you have to do other things as different techniques uh, what we do need though is um, something to practice on we need some junk to um, try and take some compo some components off and you ask and the bin man doth provide because when I was uh, taking the dog out for his morning walk this morning obviously this morning because it was his morning walk um, that was laying on the top of one of the wheeler bins. And actually, there was two of them. There was one of these and um, a Sky Plus box. Well, I've got that in the other room drying out because um, I might be able to use it if it works. If it not, I'll just pull the hard drive out of it because they're always handy. This is pretty much complete and total junk. This is one of the first gen um, Sky Digital boxes. Uh, like I said, it's pretty much complete and total junk, but. Um, this will have a nice uh, multi-layer circuit board in it that we can um, we can have a play with. We can try and pull some of these components off. We can try taking some of the surface mount stuff off there as well. So um, I won't bore you with um, me disassembling this thing. I'll get this thing pulled apart and we'll get the board on the um, bench and we'll um, take it from there. So back in a sec. Right, okay, there we go. As you can see, we've got a board stripped down um, that we can play with. Not as easy as I was um, hoping it would be, because they've used them horrible torques, the security torques with the tiny little thing in the middle, and I couldn't find my um, driver set for them. Anyway, I managed to get them out um, as many times as you can do, just with an old flat blade screwdriver, a bit of a manky damaged flat blade screwdriver like that. So, we've got a board we can play with, and to be honest, there's not huge numbers of things that are uh, massively useful on this. There's a few caps that are behind it. Um, and there's a few bits on the back here which are handy. That's useful. Um, that though we can just unplug. Um, that is the same as on um, a PC. The wire is the same. I've used these before. Um, it's just a RS232. Um, nine pin in, complete with um, the ribbon cable and everything. So they're just handy to keep in your spares box then. You know, for going on a PC. So that can go in the spares box. But, right, let's see what's going to be... Uh, why this board is a good board to um, use as a practice board. And you can literally get these like I just did. People leave them on the tops of bins and things like that. And if you can get hold of them, just grab them. Because they make really, really, really good practice boards. You're not going to break anything that's worth anything. Um, there's low, they're a multi-layer board. There's loads of ground planes and stuff on here, so they're quite a tricky board to get stuff actually off. So like I said, they make a good board for um, playing with and experimenting on. Uh, we'll start, we'll try and get some of this through hole stuff off and I'll show you some of the techniques I use. As you can see on the back here, we've got loads and loads of ground plane on this thing. Um, what's going to be a, a good one to try with first? Let's see what we can um, pull off that's going to be reasonably tricky. Uh, we've got some capacitors here, um, 400 volt, 10 UF, these are in the, um, the switch mode power supply circuit and they have a fair, fair amount of um, copper around them. If we look on the other side there's also a bit 
round here um, there's, um, where the grounds are connected are two big um, copper planes so that should be fairly tricky to um, desolder them so what we will do and this also is a um, this is um, lead free um, this board which again makes life um, a little bit harder because um, the lead free stuff the solder um, it's got a higher melting point it doesn't flow as nicely as um, leaded solder so first thing we'll do we'll take um, a little bit of flux we'll just add a little bit of flux to some of the points we want to desolder I'll do this one as well like that and we'll take some solder I'll use this thick stuff it doesn't really oh, I've got a bit broken up there that'll do I'll use this thick stuff because it doesn't really matter too much all we want to do is really swamp the lead lead free or oh, the old solder if this was a, an older board you're working on some nice new leaded solder this would be saying if it, this would be very similar if you'd had capacitor leakage on the board um, you'd do something very similar adding some fresh new solder and some fresh flux just like that do that one as well Now the first thing we will try is we'll try doing it with the uh, manual desoldering pump because not everyone has a desoldering station like that. Um, if you're really into the hobby then it is something I'd highly recommend you um, invest in eventually but um, you can use one of these for most of it but it's really a case of now you've got some a lower melting point solder in there that makes things a lot easier so let's uh, that's, this has quite still got quite a ground plane around it like that, quite a copper mass around it. So we'll hold the one the um, leg up. We'll go in. We've got most of it off in that one. Sometimes you need a few attempts. That's mostly free. Again, that's got most of the solder out. But that's not completely free yet, but it's mostly out. If it's a two two legged component like this now, because you've got most of it out, what you can do is just walk it off the board. So if we warm that leg up, we pull down very slightly on one side of the capacitor, go to this leg, again warm it up, very slightly pull down on that side of the capacitor over on this side again again warm it up pull down ever so slightly go back onto this side and there that's the capacitor out capacitor isn't damaged that's okay to reuse whenever you was replacing it because that's a bad capacitor all we need to do now so we can go back in with the um, desoldering station, just warm. Like we might have to add a bit of um, new solder. But basically if we uh, warm the oil up now, go over. We should be able to clear the hole out. Sometimes you need quite a few attempts. Sometimes you need to add some um, add some fresh flux as well. Let's try this one. That one's gone straight away. So you see, that's I'll get you down once I've um, cleared them out. So that one's cleared out. This one's been a little bit more tricky. I'm just. Sometimes you have to use use a little bit more heat or hold the iron on for a little bit longer. And then suck. And as you can see there, we have actually cleared those two out. Let's see if I can get you down so you can see. 
Right, can you see at that? Right, where are we? There. If you can look at that point there, you can see where that component was. We've cleaned that leg out there and we've cleaned that out so we could if we want to put you know put a new capacitor back on there just needs all the flux cleaning off but I'll show you basically the same thing how easy it is with the actual um, desoldering station so obviously this is vacuum operated rather than um, having a, um, a manual pump but all we do is go in warm the component up And I didn't even have to rocket or pull it, literally. The capacitor drops straight out of the board. I don't have to clean any of the legs up. And I don't have to clean the holes up in the board. They're ready to go. We'll just do one more like that. If you watch. Are we on the board there? Yeah. Just hold it in. There we go. You can see, just put that away a sec. It literally just dropped off the board. So even though this is a multi-layer board, you know, with the right equipment, it's actually fairly easy to um, get components off like that. It is possible with a desoldering um, pump like that, but it's a lot harder as you can see then. Let me get you zoomed out a little bit. And get you up a little bit. Let's try something else on this board. I mean, they were fairly easy because they only had a bit of uh, metal ground plane around them. You can see on this side as well, that's the side we was struggling a little bit more. That side's not got too much on it. Basically, all three of these um, capacitors are connected in parallel. It's a bit of a... they've cheaped out. They used to use like a... 33 UF capacitor or um, a 48 UF capacitor in um, these at 400 volts. What they've done now is they're using three. Uh, what you sorry on this iteration they've used three um, for uh, 10 UF capacitors. I mean these are still usable. We can still reuse these in vintage radio stuff because they're still 400 volt rated and they do work quite nicely. Um, but they're not as useful as some of the other ones on um, some of the other boards like this from um, you know sky boxes and um, sat, you know, free sat boxes and um, old DTV boxes and stuff there are some more useful components um, let's just have a go at something that's got a little bit more um, copper around it we've got an IC there let's see how hard that one's going to be to get out Actually, it's not got a lot on this side, but we have got quite a bit of copper on that side there. So again, we'll use the um, same technique. We'll take a little bit of um, fresh flux. We'll add some fresh flux. Like that. And we'll go in with some leaded solder. Add some leaded solder to the old lead free stuff. There we go. the desoldering station. It's warm. If you watch basically you need to keep it moving like that. Now that one we might have to do again.
half of the thing is moving it backwards and forwards while you're actually sucking. Because while you're doing that, you're basically moving the leg from side to side and you're getting some of the solder out from the um, sides of the leg. Now that is still quite well attached even though we've um, removed most of the solder from there. Put that down a sec. That component is actually, I mean we can see that there's a lot of solder being removed but that is actually still fairly well fixed on the board if I show you. I'm going to take my pick here now and try and lift the um, IC as you can see it's still really really well attached because you've got quite a lot of thermal mass in this part of the um, board. Now there's a couple of different ways we can tackle this. You can already see that that leg's nice and free. And that leg's nice and free. And that one. But that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one is still well attached. We've got a couple of options we can do here. We can go back in with the desoldering station and keep working at that. You could do exactly the same with a manual pump like this and basically what you want to do, I'll show you, is basically the ones that are still attached will want to add a little bit of new fresh solder to it. Take our um, desolder pump, desolder station, what have you. Reheat it and suck again. And actually we freed that one off that time. So we could basically go around like that and keep doing that to get it free. Or oh, there's another technique we can use. And that's to actually use a little bit of hot air, hot air to help us. So what we will do. I'll grip the IC with these tweezers from this side. Like that. and we'll bring in some hot air. Let this get up to temperature and all we're going to do is just basically bring some hot air around the IC. We'll just get hold of the IC again. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So all I'm doing is just warming because I've got most of the um, solder off them pins can feel that moving already. I'm going to push them down a little bit. You keep your hot air moving, you don't want to hold it in one space for too long or else you risk. I might actually have to swap over to some different tweezers because they keep slipping off. That's better. basically keep your air moving round and we just try to warm the rest of that solder and we should be able to gently draw that IC out I can feel it going now, there we go you can see we've got the IC out of the board put the hot air down and if we, I'll get you zoomed in oops can see here, where are you? Oh yeah, there. You can see there, we've not actually done any damage to the board. I'll flip it up on the other side, you can see there's no damage to the board there. We haven't delaminated the board in any way, the board's still nice and flat there. Oops, you can't see. But you can't, if you have a look there, like I said we haven't discoloured it really, that's just a little bit of flux residue. Give it a quick square with some IPA. Wipe over that. You can see. Get that bit of flux residue off. We've not actually damaged the board in any way there. We've got the IC off without any problems. 
There's the IC if we wanted to reuse it. Alright, what else can we try to take off? What's going to be really, really tricky because it's got a load of. Uh, we've got capa some capacitors around here. Which have got a lot of ground plane around them. They've got. Let me get you zoomed out again. Oops. These have got an awful lot of ground plane around them. If you look here, we've got all this copper here, all this ground on that side. And again, the same on this side. So what you can do sometimes if you've got a problem like this and you want to get these components off, even if we just went in with the desoldering station, because of the thermal mass of the board, it can be really, really tricky to get these uh, components off. So what you want to do, well what I generally do, is I take my hot air and before I start removing the components from the board, I'll basically just warm the board with the hot air. So this is the this is the area we want to concentrate on because this is where we want to take those um, capacitors off from. So I'm not trying to melt the solder on the actual um, components here. What I'm trying to do is warm the whole area up round where we're actually going to take those components off. And the idea of doing this is that when we go in with the um, either a soldering iron and a desolder pump or the desoldering station um, we've already got a lot of heat into this board it's not going to try and suck the heat straight away out of what we're actually uh, working on so this is a... I've got the about 350 degrees here so fairly warm but not as hot as the uh, desoldering station will go So that should do about that. We'll go in with the um, desoldering station now. In fact, well, I think we'll have to do, because I didn't do it, we will have to add a little bit of flux. You can tell the boy is already quite warm because the flux has just melted instantly. I can add a little bit of leaded solder. This is one of the main things. We did actually pull a fair bit of that lead free off then, but your leaded solder is your key because it's got a much lower uh, melting point and it's just easier to work with than leaded solder than lead free solder, I find. Right, now let's try that again. This board is all still nice and hot around that area. Otherwise we'd have to go in and warm it again. That one's out. And the board and the components literally drop straight off the board there. Let's go through. There we go. There's the capacitor we took off. dropped out the board right there. Let's try another one. In fact let's try one and we'll try doing it with the uh, manual desoldering station. But we will do it like we've just done there. Um, we will in fact we will um, add some flux now. Just add a little bit of flux to it. There's still a bit of warmth in that board but it is cooling off now. Add a bit of fresh, nice leaded solder to them. I mean, I suppose if you're working on your newer, even slightly vintage consoles, anything made in the last 20 years, you're going to um, come across this issue because it'll all be pretty. When did they start? Uh, when did they mandate lead-free solder? Now was it about 2008, something around about that time? So basically, anything made after then is going to contain it. 
this is actually, I think this is from 2006, and this has got a lead free um, soldering. Because it had come out, you know, a little bit earlier. I think 2008 or 2007 was when they actually mandated that you couldn't make anything without it. You're sorry, using it anymore. Leaded salt that that is. So we'll bring the warmth back in. We'll rewarm this part of the board. So all we're doing with this is when we go in with a soldering iron and a solder sucker, or the soldering station for that matter, the heat isn't going to instantly be pulled into this copper around the board. We've already got some heat into it. Otherwise it just acts as a huge heat sink and it pulls all the heat away from where you're actually um, working. Okay, we'll, say, we'll be happy with that now. We'll warm that area back up. And so just to see if we can do it, uh, we'll go in. And this isn't the best, I will say it right away, this is not the best uh, manual desoldering pump. It's a bit of a, I've had it a, a long, long time. It really does need replacing. Does tend to gum up a little bit as well, so we'll just give it a quick clean before we uh, carry on. See if we can get it to perform a little bit better than it was because it was feeling a little bit sticky. That feels a bit better. Let's try that now. Yeah, it feels a little bit better. It's still. What you can sometimes do actually is put a little bit of oil in them if it's being a bit awkward. Got some sewing machine oil here, this should do. You just push it down a little bit so we can uh, get some oil. Oops. <coughs> push that down a little touch. A couple of drops of oil in there, not much. Move that up and down a little bit. Put that back together. Oops. Let's give that a try now. That's feeling better. Basically the oil just makes the seal that's the seal's getting a little bit tired. I can feel that's a bit got a bit more suck to it now. Right. Now let's try again. We'll um get the solder now. Let's see if we can get these off with a uh, a manual desoldering pump. So it's going to need a bit of heat. In fact, let's get a little bit more heat into the board, seeing we messed about like that. We'll... Yeah, we've lost a lot of the heat out of the board. So we'll go back in and we'll warm it back up again. You don't want too much heat, you don't want, you know, 450 degrees or anything like that. I've got the um, desoldering station set to about 350, and if you look, I'm, I'm a fair way away from the actual board. I'm not trying to blast it or anything, I'm just trying to warm the copper around where we're actually working. Now let's try taking that off. Oh, we've still got plenty of heat in the board. Go in with the uh, soldering iron. It's not going to be as easy as it was with the uh, desoldering station, but. We 
should still be able to get it off. I might have to try the walk technique. That's coming off. We've got rid of most of the, uh, and the board is still fairly warm. We've got rid of most of the solder. There we go. So that's the component off. But we're, obviously our holes are blocked up, so we will have to go in with the um, manual desolder pump again and see if we can unblock the holes. Again, that's being a little bit tricky. They're not really um, unblocking. Doing it with a, a manual, you know, it it takes a lot of patience. You have to be so careful you don't overheat the board. You see how much trouble I'm going to trying to get that off. Just if you watch with the uh, proper desoldering station. Let me see if I can get you up a little bit so you can see still. I'll zoom you in a little bit. Ooh, there we go. This is where we're working. Just hold it on a second. There we go, that one's clear. And that one's clear. It's that much quicker to do, uh, you know, using something like this. And this is not an expensive one. This was like seventy pounds or something like that. This uh, desoldering station. In fact, I think I've got uh, an unboxing of this on my channel when I first got it. Um, but it's definitely worth the investment if you're going to be messing about with a fair amount of this type of um, stuff because it makes getting components on and off the board a lot easier than. Um, using one of these. I said these you can't especially if you're working on older stuff that's you know, like single layer or just perhaps two layer um, it's not as much of a um, problem when you've got like many many layers and um, stuff like this um, these do struggle a bit. I suppose one other thing we can perhaps look at on here is removing some of these um, surface mount parts. Right, okay sorry about that um, I really need to get some new batteries for this new camera because the ones that came with uh, don't seem to last as long as they're meant to. <clears throat> anyway, what I, as I was saying, what I think we'll do is just have a quick look at perhaps taking um, some surface mount stuff off here as well because obviously again that's a problem with these multi-layer boards. I'll just show you basically how I um, tackle this. We'll take something small like one of these, uh, one of these off here. So again, very very similar, uh, we'll go in with some flux to start with, and we'll add a little bit of flux to the component we want to take off, I've got my uh, little tweezers here, we've got some hot air, first thing, like I did before, before we actually start trying to take the component off, we want to warm round it. So I will go in like this and I will basically warm round the board. I have brought the temperature on the um, desoldering station up a tiny little bit, we're up about 400 and I have very slightly increased the, um, the airflow. But basically we'll warm round like this. Now there are people that can do this far far better than I can, um, you know, watch some of the real experts, um, Lewis Rossman, um, anything, watching him work on the, the old MacBook boards, and there's a chap I've um, started watching, an uh, English chap called The Coder, who uh, works on a lot of like PlayStation 5s, PlayStation 4s, Xboxes, things like that. Um, his videos are really good for watching surface mount work. As you can see I'm just basically warming round. We'll go in with some tweezers. And we're not quite there yet. You'll actually just see the um, the colour of the legs just change ever so slightly basically. Let's see if we can um, knock this off the board now. There we go. As simple as that, that's off. There's the component we uh, we removed. Oops. There he is. There. 
after the components undamaged, completely undamaged. And we've got absolutely no damage to the board at all. The board's still nice as well. So I'll just show you one more, same technique. So basically we'll add some solder to so add some flux to it to make it flow easier. Then we'll start warming round. So we don't go straight into the chip like that and start blasting it. We warm the area around the chip first. So you don't want your uh, airflow too mad hot or you risk all like all these little components around here, you risk blowing them off the board. You just want enough airflow. Let's go and let's try that now. Some people just want to try and lift the chip directly off the board personally. If I can, I try and just flick it off. That's there we go. That one didn't come off quite as um, nice as the other one, but oops, I have wrecked the board. But it doesn't matter; it's a scrap board. But we did get the chip off. That's something you have to watch, actually. What happened there, when I dropped the chip, it stuck back on there. And when I pulled it up, I actually pulled one of the tracers off the board there. Like I said, it doesn't matter, this is a scrap board, this is going straight in the bin after I've uh, finished doing this. But we did recover the um, IC. There. But yeah, that's. I'll show you one more, seeing um, I must that one up. But that is basically the technique that I use when I want to take stuff off these multi-layer boards. It's all down really to warming it up before you start. You get your flux in there. Your flux, like I said, your flux is uh, one of the best things. You can even add some leaded solder to these to help them flow. You don't usually need it though, you can usually just do it like this. Just warm it up, keep your airflow moving. Never keep your airflow in one place at one time or else you'll just damage the board or scorch the component. Let's try going in with these. We'll see if we can lift this one straight off with the tweezers. Gentle fit, there we go, and straight off. And again, we've got absolutely zero damage to the board there. We've got the component which you could possibly or potentially still use. I mean, this is good for salvaging components off boards. Um, if you don't, you know, if you, um, you don't need the component, you know the component's bad. You could always possibly cut the legs, take the component off, and then just use some solder wick to clean up uh, the actual board round it. But if you actually want the component, then this is really the best um, the best technique to try and take it off. Now, I haven't actually tried one of these before on the, one of these boards, but these are. Let me uh, just put that down a sec. Let's see if I can get you on them. These are BGA um, type ICs. I don't really mess about with these at all. Um, I've watched uh, the coder and Lewis Rossman messing about with them. These are um, BJ's ball grid array. They've got tiny little solder balls all underneath this, so you've got actually no components you can see. Sorry, no legs you can see around them. Everything is underneath the IC. We'll try and pop one of these off, uh, just, just for the ex um, experience of doing it. Like I said, these are something I don't really deal with. I've changed like possibly a couple of BGA chips and they were tiny ones. The other had like perhaps eight balls on them or something like that and that was a right pain to do. And the chips that I'd got to replace them with already had been reballed. So I didn't have to mess about reballing chips or anything. Um, But that's, I mean, that's one of the things when you are working on these modern stuff. Um, it's a lot different to the vintage stuff I like working on. Get them in there. 
So I've got some fresh flux around that. And let's see how hard it is to get this off the um, off the board. And the flux is all melted around there. Again, like I said, we want to warm round it as well as just warm in the IC. Let's have a look here. That's not a. That's still well attached. See here, is this going to come off? It's coming loose. There we go. We'll get you zoomed in there. Oops, let's see if that's going to focus on there. Are you going to focus? Right, there we go. As you can see, See, I would have no way of putting that IC back on, basically, because, flip it over like that, I could clean it all up and get it ready for reballing, that would be easy enough to do, I've got everything to do that, but I, what I don't have are the solder balls to go on there, I don't have um, a stencil to um, actually fit the balls on. I, I've got the hot air rework and everything for actually um, doing it, but I have never ever tried, like you said, balling and reballing an, an IC like this. So that might be a fun project actually. I'll get um, something scrap that doesn't matter, that works. Um, I'll try taking um, a ball grid array IC like this off. Um, something like that would be ideal because there's a fair number of balls on there. Um, but it's not, you know, it's not like a, um, a GPU or something like that that's got a few hundred, which a uh, hat goes off to people like, you know, the people that work for Lewis Rossman, Lewis Rossman, um, the coder, people like that, like I said, that they'll take change, you know, like GPUs, APUs, stuff like that, stuff that's got many, many hundreds of these little um, BGA um, balls and take it off one board, put all new balls on it and reflow it onto a new board and stuff like that. It's uh, absolutely you know, unbelievable. I'm not at that kind of level. I just like messing about with the old stuff, you know. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't. even the old stuff now does involve a little bit of um, surface mount. But if, get, you know, if you want to play with this type of stuff, play with, and you don't want to damage anything that's valuable, just find some of these old sky boxes. Because you've got all sorts of stuff you can play about with. There's a few parts you can salvage off them. Not a huge amount, really. Uh, but they're great for practicing stuff like this. You're taking these ICs off, um, trying to put things back on. Um, just use them as a good practice board like that, really. Like I said, they are good in that re you know, in that uh, regard. and They are basically e-waste. Like I said, this was just sat on the top of um, someone's rubbish bin and I thought oh, I'll use that and make um, be useful for that video I, um, I thought I'll make for that chap so um, yeah that's basically um, some of the ways that I get components off these multi-layer boards like this it is basically get the uh, get it warm before you start um, some hot air is really one of the best things you know, warm up the back plane round where you're actually working before you actually start taking the components off and you'll find they'll come out um, a lot easier. You can, for a lot of stuff, get away with, an, with a desolder pump like this one. But really, for especially if you've got lead-free uh, lead solder, um, a multi-layer board like this, um, 
the electric desoldering pump, you know, it's it's a game changer. It just pulls these parts off so easy compared with um, compared with using this and the addition of heat to actually warm it up before you start. Like I said, it really does um, it really does help it. <coughs> anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. Uh, the next video, um, hopefully, will be on that little Sony. Um, transistor radio, uh, well IC um, radio that I'm repairing for one of Andy's friends because the um, capacitors I ordered well before, um, well it was just after Christmas before the new year have finally arrived so um, next video hopefully we'll be doing a little bit more work on that so I'll say uh, hope you enjoyed this little video messing about with some junk so uh, thanks for watching and goodbye